Hello, welcome back. Let's continue our discussion on Pandas data frame. Of course, we've talked about NumPy, we've looked at how to assess the elements in the NumPy, and we have introduced the concept of Pandas in the previous video. And uh, I've explained this image. Please watch the previous video if you want to uh, understand the continuation of this part we've looked at how to create a data frame using list of lists nested lists we've seen how to create data frames in dictionaries we've also discussed discussed how to create data frames using numpy arrays in this video and this part of the video our focus is learning how to create data frames from other files the first of which will be csv files we want to see how to import uh, csv files and then create data frame from them or using those files okay so here i'm going to pass the i'm creating a data frame so this is this is a method in pandas it's called the read method and the read method has different types of you know read functions so let's do this let's cut this from here uh let me quickly do that here i'm gonna cut i have uh two this i've already trans changed this to a comment line and i'll tell you why i did that shortly i cut this from here from this cell and create a new cell above paste it right in here okay now this method of reading in a data set like i said there are different files extensions in pandas or that pandas can read in so i have the data set called football underscore players it's a csv file and that's why you see me adding the extension csv saved in the same location where this jupyter notebook is located the same folder if you want to bring in or import a csv excel a html or no json file from a local pc the file has to be stored in the same location where the jupyter notebook is located so if they are in different locations then you might possibly get an error message pop up when you intend or when you try to do that all right so first of all let's hit this button and or before we go before we go ahead with that i would like to show you other read method so when i type pd.read or pd dots i press my tab button and i type re you see read read clipboard which means i can also read from clipboard i can import a data structure or data set from clipboard and then create data frame from it I can get CSV files, see read underscore CSV, read underscore Excel, read underscore theta, FWF, QBQ, HDF, HTML, JSON, ORC. We have packet, we have uh, pickle, we have SAS, SPSS, SQL, read SQL underscore query, table, starter, table, and so on yeah so these are the different read files different files that pandas uh, data frame can read into um jupyter notebook or into python using python rather so let me clean that and i'm installing i'm get, getting in read underscore csv so if i should run this cell that will import the data set let's see how that looks like before we get it into pandas data frame so i have load underscore data which is data set just got into pandas and already it's it's presented well as a data frame already shown is showing as a table because this is a csv file and of course csv file is expected to be displayed right as a table properly this way okay if you see in my comments section i said load data pass name as an index column all right so which means i want to use this first column called name as the index instead of having my index run from zero to the last element here about uh, 37 okay to the last record 
I want to have the names of these players as the index. Okay, and how do I do that here? How do I do uh, set that up? After the title of the file that I intend to import, and close within single or double quotes, put a comma, and then type index equal index underscore column or index underscore call equals type in the name exactly the way it is spelled and written in your data set so i put it right here in a single double quote name okay once i do this if i should run this cell again and call the second cell load underscore df you'd notice that the index would become or the name column will become the index and name will no longer be the title of that column let's see how that will play out here run this cell and run the next cell and then there we go and see that the index had been you know changed to the names of the footballers or the names of the players so i'm going to convert this to a comment and move on with the other part of the code okay yep now i would i would like to transfer the csv file that has been imported into my jupyter notebook and stored in the name called load underscore df into a data frame by calling pd dot data frame and uh, giving uh, imputing the load underscore df uh, name which stores the csv file and once we do that i'd like to inspect the first five rows by calling the head method so the head dot head method will pop just the first five records from our table and there we go so you see it still it also looks like the other data other data set that we imported because that is also a csv file uh, however this is uh quite different because this had been you know transferred into uh, uh created this had been transferred into a, into a pandas data frame so this is this is how our data set looks like it has the shape is 5 by 30 so right now it's showing five rows and 38 columns it means that there are 38 columns in this data set okay and it's showing the first five rows because we called dot head method if you intend if you're if you're interested to see the first 10 rows then you have to give 10 right type 10 inside the curve bracket to say okay instead of showing me the first five rows by default please show me the first 10 rows and that will increase the number of rows to 10 and see so you have 10 rows 38 columns all right let's just display the first five rows okay uh that's fine all right now let's learn how to assess the elements in the data frame we can assess by index and there are two ways to do that to assess by index only in the data frame we use the i lock or the lock functions with the indices in square brackets the i lock function refers to the index location so we pass the number of the index while the lock function refers to the name of the index so we pass the index name now the i the i there represents the index location i represents the index location then the lock here represents just the location so when you're using the location function then you need to know the name of that particular index whose uh which uh, uh, the name you're interested in display but if you want to use the the index numbering the number that we took out by resetting index then we use i lock and the number follows okay yeah so i think i have uh i have just so just in case in case this particular this particular setting wasn't done here okay let me take this out and then get our table again you would see the the name here and then i'll show you how to reset we can also reset data frame from here i'll show you how to do that quickly real quick so this is one way to do to reset your index uh at at the point of importing it into into your Jupyter notebook so let's say this this data set was imported just like this and we have the index the indices zero to the last the last rule the name has not been made the index at, as at this point when we go for that here is how to reset the index okay i'll use this function i'm assigning i'm resetting the index as name so this resets the index to the name column and i'll still assign it to df 
okay that is what will be achieved right here reset the index it sets the name column as the index using the set underscore index and you select it you choose whatever column of interest that you would like to make the index now once i do this and we display data frame df you see that we've actually set that name as the index so this are this is another way to achieve that just in case you missed it at the point of importing the data set of course you can always go back to modify your, your, your code but if you intend to perform some form of data analysis or data cleaning processes before setting your index you can always reset your index using this code or that syntax all right to like i said again data frame dot i lock an index i or index number returns the series at index i i lock at index i start full colon index i end returns the data frame from start to end but uh, not the end not included then if you use lock you have to call the name of the index let's see how that works practically here if i want to get the fifth rule remember let's see the first let's just see the head dot head of this so that we can uh, relate with what we'll be displaying uh, from the other lines of code so the fifth row is going to be zero one two three four okay the fifth row will be the sixth let's see the first six rows we have zero one two three four five so this is the fifth row right zero one two three four five sorry Robert is the fifth row because if I'm counting, I'll count from one to five. But if the, by the index, it's going to be index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four. So index four is all shows the fifth row. When I do df dot lock four, gives me that fifth row. So the records you see here are the records for Robert. Can you see it? Robert Lewandowski. Lewandowski. So that's the player whose attributes are all presented here okay so it takes out all the information of rabbits in this row and print them out as a series so right now we are seeing a series okay uh, a series of this particular uh, person uh, player called rabbit all right so that's how to you know assess the record using the iloc method Okay, now for the range of values, we want to get select rows 5 to 10. Using the range, so give me 5 to 10. So it's not going to include 10, but the ninth record. Let's run this and see how that plays out. So right now, it presents it on the table. Gives us the fourth row. One, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Uh, sorry, the one with in index. This is index 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. So these are the out, output of all of those rows from 4 to 10. Now, if I'm interested in seeing information about Lionel Messi, I use the lock method and not the I lock. Okay, just with the lock, you call the name of the index Lionel Messi in as a string. I can call any of this name as a string and that will give you the entire information of that player. So it gives me the entire information of this particular player. All right, now a quick, a quick, um, a quick. What what is it called now? Clarification. Uh, though that is not the right. That is that's not the, the right word I, I'm looking for. But let me just say a quick clarification. Now, please note that this data set was randomly generated. So if you see any information by a player, for those of you who know these players very well don't say oh Lionel Messi is not a nationality of Croatia just know that this this was randomly generated okay I'm working with a kind of uh, fictitious data set it's not real all right and you might be saying oh Lionel Messi is no longer 24 years old he's older yes just know this is a fictitious data set okay let's move on now how do i assess by column to assess by column is very very easy all you need to do is to put either you can assess by just a single column put the column name in a square bracket or you can assess by seeing list of multiple columns by listing all of the columns in a list 
Okay, the very first example, I want to see the ages of all the players in that table. All I need to do is call the data frame name DF in this just before it at the front of it, open a, a square bracket and put in the age. Please note that the column names has to be called, they have to be called exactly the way they are presented in the data set. So if you want to call a particular column and you're not sure of how that column is spelled, either with all upper or all lowercase, this is one way to see the list of columns in the data set. All you need to do is to call the data set df.columns. So once you call df.columns and you run this cell, it gives you the columns, the list of all the columns in that data set. Uh, from here, I know, okay, age is actually spelled with capital A and the rest, so I'm very sure of how it's spelled. So if I want to extract the age column, put the age within the curve bracket, I mean the square bracket, and run the cell. And that gives you the age of all the players. You can see Lina Messi 24, Cristiano Ronaldo 37, Neyman uh, 32, and so on and so forth. All the players captured in that table that giving you their ages because it called the age column. Okay. Next is extracting multiple columns. So if you're interested in seeing the ages and the nationality of the players, you put the list of the age and the nationality. Please take note that we have two brackets, two square brackets, which means that the, the inner bracket is the, is the list of the columns you want to see. And the outer square bracket is the syntax of how to extract or how to assess columns or rows in a data set. Let's run that cell and that gives us a data frame containing the index, the age column and the nationality column. This is interesting, right? Super interesting. Okay, let's move on and check how do we assess by index and by column. Alright, so here I want to display the first five rows and the two columns. I don't want to see all these outputs. This is just the entire record on the, on the table. I want to see just a few of them, right? Up to this point. So how do I do that? You say, give me from index zero to five and these two columns. Okay, let's convert this to, let's first convert that to comments. When we run this cell, it gives us from zero to five of the entire columns can you see the entire columns are also presented but i want to take just the first two columns age and nationality i put that right before right at the front of that first line of code and it drops others and just presents just the first two rows isn't this beautiful of course it is that's how to extract a combination number of columns and rows now we can also do that by changing their positions. So here, I just took the columns of interest and then I lock the, the number. So let's let's comment this line first, run this. When you run this, it gives you the first two columns, including the index. And if you want to see just the, from index zero to five, you put your dot I lock and that also works just fine, uh, similar to the first print. So which means that uh, locating or, or slicing a data, data frame yeah, by column and by row is commutative. That is what mathematicians will call it, which means that irrespective of the order, whether you call the columns first before the rows, you still get the same output. You can see the output remains unchanged. Now, let's talk about when to use data frames. When, when, when can you use data frames? Now, unlike NumPy array, which is situa uh, suited for storing and performing computations on homogeneous data, uh, that is data of the same type, data frames can accommodate heterogeneous data. This makes them the best choice for data structure and manipulating often messy data. That is tabular data from spreadsheets or SQL tables. We should use a pandas data frame if all of the following statements hold. One, if we have two-dimensional data, that is rows and columns. Two, and the data type in the same is the same within a column. 
all data type within a column must be the same but it can contain that multiple columns of different that contain different data sets that is the each column has different a particular column is let's say string like in this case the other one is integer and then we are interested in the index rows and column names so those are the conditions for using data frames so i have some exercises for you uh, for those uh, my students you can have access to the exercises go to them please practice with those exercises and ensure that you are able to solve them if you have any questions if you are stuck with anyone please feel free to ask questions if you are not a student of the Depart academy and you want to have this jupyter notebook of course we are open to sharing the notebook with you just reach out to us and we get back we we'll get to you asap thank you once more for watching this series of introduction into introduction to numpy and pandas i hope you find you found this video very the series the collection of videos very interesting educating and insightful please if you're yet to subscribe to our youtube channel please do so share our videos with your colleagues your friends and anyone who you know that is interested in data we are a company that is focused on data we are into consultancy you are also but we are also into into trainings again thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next set of videos for now bye bye